Hello there. So we are back in my art journal here and we are going to do the art journaling bird poetry project. And I don't know about you guys, but I love poetry and I love the written word. And a lot of times words will inspire me to create images. Uh, I don't know if it is because I come from an illustration background, which is what I got my degree in or, or what, but I'm back in my art journal. I'll have some links in the classroom and some ideas of where to find poetry if you don't already have your favorite uh, poems picked out. And so we're going to do an art journaling project. So I've got my art journal ready. I have gessoed with clear gesso and on both sides of the pages. I have actually glued two pages together. Remember our wings are over here. And I just wanted to make sure that it was a little bit thicker, a little heavier, so it would take the paint. And then I used a little bit of gaff tape down the center. You could use masking tape. Gaff tape is actually a fabric tape. It's very strong, so this kind of reinforces that binding and the, the center spine here, the crease. It makes it easier to paint across. So, typically how I work when I'm doing an art journal project is I choose my color palette first. The reason I do this is it allows me to not necessarily focus on, you know, what color I'm going to do next, if I know what colors I'm going to use, I can just work more intuitively, I can be a little freer, and I don't get hung up on, you know, color selection and stuff. So I usually either choose a color palette. I love using, um, this is the Design Seeds book. You can't actually get this anymore in print. I was lucky enough to get it a long time ago. You can download the PDF books and have them printed, however. So I do love using a color palette book. Or I'll just pick a piece of um, either vintage paper or scrapbook paper and choose my color palette from there. This is a very antique old piece of map and I love the kind of soft green and the really soft blues and the creams and so I think I'm gonna use that as my inspiration. And as soon as I was able to pick that, this is what I love about picking a color palette is then you're able to quickly move on to these other uh, selections. As soon as I pick my color palette, I start being able to pull different pieces of ephemera that all go with that theme and with those colors. So you can see already I can start working and building my collage in there because I already know what I'm doing. And then I go ahead and pick out my paints. I use a lot of these craft paints, especially when I'm art journaling. Again, it saves time. I don't have to be mixing colors. I can just really enjoy the process and get right in, into it. So I've picked out my colors that will match, you know, the map that I've picked out. So that's gonna be awesome, hopefully. And the way that I typically work in my art journal is that I collage first and then paint, and then collage and paint some more. So it kind of happens in layers. And I just love working that way. I'll be using, um, a lot of you know different magazine um, images we might do an image transfer so let's just see how it goes I'm gonna start collaging and then we'll work from there you guys probably know already but I use um, matte medium this is a Liquitex you could use the golden or any other kind of um, decoupage glue this is just what I like and I typically just start going for it. You know, it's a little painful sometimes ripping these beautiful vintage pieces of paper, but at the same time, I think that I'm honoring them by using them in some art instead of them just sitting on a shelf doing nothing. That's how I kind of justify it. And because this paper is actually a little bit thick, I'm putting on a pretty good layer of medium. And I may actually do have to do a little more just to get it on there. And because this is my main color um, subject, I am putting it on first. Because all the other papers will be secondary to it. And that's a good tip, you know, 
for collage in general if you just like with fabrics in your home you know if you were doing window treatments or whatever or even you know doing a bed set you wouldn't necessarily want a whole bunch of really really busy you know fabrics it might get a little too crazy so choose a dominant piece of paper and make that kind of the one that stands out the most it's so funny I always overestimate how much paint I'm going to need and underestimate how much matte medium I'm going to need and actually it's a good idea right now for me to put um, some wax paper in between my pages because when you're gluing all this down you can start gluing your pages together and when you don't want to do that that's you know you want to kind of avoid that you can see I'm applying quite a bit of pressure once the uh, vintage paper kind of starts to give it gets a little bit better as it starts to absorb the glue I'm gonna go grab that wax paper right now so keep gluing this down this is a great time to also use a credit card okay. Can use it to get those bubbles out. And don't worry if you get some wrinkles. I don't. I try not to worry about that kind of thing. But this does a pretty good job of getting it really laid in. So again, this process for me is pretty intuitive. I don't think about it a ton. I just start working because I know if there's something I don't like, I can always go over it. And now that I know that all these pieces of paper work well together, it's kind of nice because even if I put something somewhere where I don't love it, at least I know it works with the color palette. I love these handwritten pieces. Probably my favorite kind of ephemera are letters. Just think they're so beautiful, personal, add a lot of story. So I'm a big sucker for letters, especially if they're in a foreign language. That's even better, I think. So then it's not even so much about, at least, you know, unless you read the language, it's not so much about the. Um, the words, it's about the forms of the letters. I like using a map in this piece too because to me birds are travelers obviously. They migrate, they go over great distances. You'll often see me use things three or five times or one time. You want to do odd numbers when it comes to composition. There's always, you know, exceptions to the rules, but that's kind of a general compositional rule. what I like about art journaling is that, um, at least the way I do it, and I'm sure a lot of you do, there's no expectation to what it's going to end up looking like, at least not for me. So that kind of frees me to be very loose and um, explore and not get hung up on, you know, oh this doesn't look good or whatever. I can kind of just stay present with the process and just enjoy it.
Okay, so I think that's enough collaging for me. I'm going to go ahead and dry it. So make sure that's good and dry before you move on to the next step, which is going to be paint application. And I'm just going to clean up a little bit around me. I tend to make a huge mess when I start creating, as I'm sure many of you do. I think that's just how we roll as artists. And I'm not going to get like a big palette out because I'm not going to use that much paint at this point. I'm just going to use these little dishes. That's good and dry now. If you guys have seen me do this before, you'll know that I like to touch the paint. So I just start rubbing paint onto my surface. This just helps me kind of feel out the piece, get used to my colors, and just kind of get into it. I'm a very tactile person, so this just helps me kind of relax and It's fun. I guarantee it, it's fun. But of course you can use brushes if you prefer. I also really like the very soft, kind of blended look you can get with your finger that's harder to achieve, achieve sometimes with a brush. So be aware of that. Make sure you're changing directions if you want that kind of soft blended look. Just keep working it until you've kind of moved color around everywhere. You've got a good color balance going. This kind of unifies the. Uh, this kind of unifies your collage, so it doesn't look like such a patchwork. It also just kind of gets you over that hump where you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do next and all that sort of stuff. Moves you past that point, which I think is always good. Same thing with the collage. Make sure you're moving the color around. Don't always, you know, don't put one color in one area, but maybe not ever anywhere else. Our eyes like to see color move throughout a piece. So consider that as well. And have your baby wet your baby wipes handy for wiping away any part that you want to reveal. You cover it up too much. You can also kind of just use the baby wipe to kind of spread the paint too. to leave certain parts kind of more thick and op opaque and a little more deliberate. After you kind of get that first layer on, you can kind of be a little bit more bold. You notice I'm changing my fingers. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up with mud if you keep using the same fingers, so make sure you're aware of that.
Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that right there. I think I'm pretty good. Look at all the paint I put out, see? So bad. That was me being conservative. Shoot. I'm kind of just looking at this now to see if I have color balance. I kind of squint my eyes a little bit and kind of look at it, see how my eye moves through it, where do I see the colors, where do I feel like I need some more color, or something needs to be pushed back. So kind of analyze your background. I thought it'd be fun to do some stenciling um, on here too to bring more pattern and another layer. I'm going to grab my stencils. Okay guys, so I actually pulled a few stencils that I might want to try here and just to add another layer of pattern. And I quite like these. This is a Martha Stewart um, stencil that I've never actually used, but I like this kind of reed look. I think that's kind of neat and could add an interesting little element here. So I'm going to dry this and then uh, stencil some of these on. So I have, um, so I have a little makeup brush here. I've got my paint out and I'm going to go ahead and try and Stencil this. As you guys know, stencils either turn out or they don't. So let's give it a go. And if it doesn't work, I'll just paint over it. It's not a big deal. So that's pretty cool. I kind of love that. So now, of course, I've got to repeat it somewhere because I don't want to only have it in one place. Maybe I'll do some over here. So yeah, I really like that. I think it's really fun. And let's see, where else do I want it? I think I want it up here at the top. Let's use this part of it, because we haven't used this part yet. You never know with a stencil. It's either going to be cool or it's going to be super annoying. <laughs> I love the kind of natural element um, that it has. I might do a few of these little dots over here just to kind of continue the idea. incorporate the magazine image a little bit more into our collage by painting over it. Because we have our color palette that we already established that's also being seen in this magazine picture, it makes it pretty easy to do. 